today is going to be the start of Meg Ryan fall. I have officially decorated for autumn. Today we will be making homemade pumpkin bread. Do you see this? It says Halloween Town. Like, I just, I cannot. You know, like, this is my element. And it's just, it's so good. It's so good. Martha Stewart on a budget, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Hi, everyone. Today is officially the start of the autumn season. Are you ready? My name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna be a really, really fun day because today is going to be the start of all of the autumn content. And I could not wait because I have been just itching to read all of the spooky books and do all of the spooky things. And I've actually been really, really wanting to film this vlog for I think like months now because as soon as July hits, I'm just like thinking of October if I'm being honest. So today, essentially, we will be getting um, a couple different decorations for my bookshelves. I actually have quite a few like spooky decorations for my bookshelves, but I do need to purchase some like fake cobwebs. So we're gonna go ahead and go out and buy some fake cobwebs today. But actually, we are also going to go to Bath and Body Works today because all of their fall candles dropped and I just need my entire house to smell like a pumpkin. And on top of all of that, I'm pretty sure that the pumpkin spice latte is back. So we are going to have the very first pumpkin spice latte of the season. I'm telling you, like the serotonin in my heart and in my head right now from all of this is just like, it's off the, it's off the charts. I also kind of wanted to share with you a couple of the books that I will be attempting to finish or start in this vlog. The first one is a book that I am not attempting to finish because it is really big. I thought that I would finish this in September, but honestly, I think, I, it will be pushing me to finish this by October because it's just really, really long. And that is going to be Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. This is about like magicians. And I think actually this takes place in the autumn time as well. I started to listen to the audio for this and it starts off so cozy. It actually starts off in a library in autumn time in the 1800s. And I just, oh, I'm so excited to read this. So that's the first book we will be reading. And then next, I think I would I'd like to try to read both of these books in this vlog. The first one is going to be A Lesson in Vengeance and this is by Victoria Lee. All I know about this is that it's like a dark academia in a haunted boarding school. And then the next one is another dark academia. It's a thriller, it's adult, and it is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. All about a teacher who I think has very unconventional methods to teaching his students, some of which include murder. So let's start things off the right way by hitting up Starbucks. Let's go to Starbucks. Okay, I'm currently in line at Starbucks. I decided actually to try something new. Um, I don't think I've ever tried this, but I remember Liv from Olivia Reads a Latte saying that she liked this a lot. So instead of the pumpkin spice, I actually got the pumpkin cold brew and I got that with a little bit of the sweet vanilla cream and I'm so excited. I decided to get it iced because <laughs> it's 97 degrees outside, but that's okay. We're still celebrating fall. But anyways, I'm really, 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 really excited. Um, I just am so ready for fall. I really, really am. I've also started the audiobook for For Your Own Good, and it is so well written so far. Like, Samantha Downing is killing it because I'm already on Teddy's side. Like, he's dealing with so many pretentious people. Here it is! The first pumpkin drink of the season! <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It is really, really good. It's like very bitter. I would say if you don't like bitter coffee, like if you're a person who prefers more sweet coffee, I think stay with like the pumpkin spice. But I also really enjoy the taste of like coffee in general. So I kind of like that juxtaposition between like the sweet foam and like the very bitter coffee. Um, I would give this like a solid 7.5 out of 10. Now it is finally time to go get some candles.
Also, I like that. Did anybody else catch this? He reminded me of Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> because listen, okay. days later and it is finally time to decorate all of my bookshelves. I have brought down every single autumnal decoration from the attic so we are absolutely set. We're just gonna go ahead and decorate all of the bookshelves in a very very spooky mana and I'm really really excited. Like I don't know if you can tell but like my adrenaline, my serotonin, it's just like peak. You know, like this is my element. Before I go ahead and get into all of the bookshelves though, I just kind of wanted to tell you that I have finished For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. And um, yeah, I gave this thing a five out of five stars. I love you. It was witty, it was funny, it was sharp, it was so messy and dramatic. But it just, you know, I know I said it was funny already, but like it was funny. Like I don't even know if it was supposed to be funny, but I thought it was funny. If you're looking for like a messy, twisted, dark academia-esque thriller with very, very interesting and dramatic characters, like I could not recommend this more. Solid, solid five out of five stars. Now you might be asking yourself, well, if you've already finished For Your Own Good, what audiobook are you going to be listening to while you do the spooky? Glad you asked. I will be listening to A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I have been excited for this book for like well over a year. It's it's time. Before I start decorating, let me show you some of the decorations that I'm gonna be using and then uh, we will get to work. I brought all of these things down from the attic. I am so excited. I usually put these like on top of my bookcases. So that is what I'm going to do. I also bought all of these things last year. They're like little spooky books on these stands. So I'm gonna put these also on my bookshelves. Then I have like a couple pumpkins, I have some cauldrons. This thing, I think last year I put like red candlesticks on this thing and then I just kind of like kept it on that little table thing right here. I've already like set that up with a pumpkin and a candle because I was filming earlier. And then of course I have several of these like cobwebs and these little plastic spiders. And we're just gonna put so many cobwebs on these things like Dracula will be proud. I also have like this spooky little skull face and also look i found all of my like mugs so i'm very excited i can't wait i love spooky mugs i just like love this time of year you know okay and i think that's it so let's get to decorating right now i'm standing in the corner I see you from across the room It's kinda crowded here But I know you see me too Everybody's singing oh Everybody's singing oh I don't know what it is about you It must be in the way you move Just say you want me to We got nothing to lose You're looking so old so now I'm moving closer to you, and it's getting dark in this room. Tell me what you wanna do, baby. Let me love you, let me love you, let me love you, let me love you, baby. Let me love you, let me love you, let me love, let me love, baby. Let me love you. Take you anywhere you want As long as we're together Everything will do You got me going all You got me going all Now I'm moving closer to you And it's getting dark in this room Tell me what you wanna do Hello friends! It has 
been, um, okay, I'm not gonna lie. It's been like four or five days since the last time I updated you. So let me kind of fill you in on, I guess, like what's happened. Not a lot. I had to take a couple of days to like finish a couple of videos that were being sponsored. And I wanted to make sure that like everything went out on time and stuff. I do, however, have some updates. So I'm gonna tell you about the book that I'm reading now, which actually is not Jonathan Strange. My goal is to start this tomorrow. <laughs> um, however, I've been reading The Strangers by Margaret Peterson Haddix. This was on my TBR. If you haven't seen my TBR, I will link it because it is out now. I am flying through this middle grade. It is so good. Next, uh, let's talk a little bit about A Lesson in Vengeance. This book, I think, is going to be on several of my personal recommendations for the autumn season because the atmosphere in this is like unparalleled. I don't remember if I've said the synopsis of this one, but like evidently, probably, yes. So I will be brief, but remember this is about a girl named Felicity who goes to a private boarding school that may or may not be haunted. And she meets a new girl named Ellis and Ellis is currently writing like a novel. They're both seniors and they are both researching the Dalloway Five, which are the founding figures of this boarding school. And they were all burned at stake for being witches. So we've got like so many cool elements in here. We've got like the dark academia vibes with the boarding school. The aesthetic in particular, Victoria Lee nailed. If you were looking for a book with a lot of dark academia vibes, like I don't think it gets more dark academia than this particular book. I also loved all of the different literary references in this book as well. That was one of my favorite things. So I definitely feel like this is going to be a lot of people's favorites this year. I don't exactly know my reading on it because I don't think it was perfect, but I really, really enjoyed reading it. The best part for sure is the atmosphere. There's a couple of things that I wish. Number one, I really wish that this had been aged up. At times it was really hard for me to believe that the characters in this book were the ages that they were. The characters in this book are supposed to be 17 and 18 and all of the girls in this preparatory school are like 17, 16, you know, all those ages. However, like they were acting kind of like old people. They were drinking gin and old fashions every single night. They were smoking cigarettes like all day long in most scenes. And they were like, well, our teachers just don't care what we do. Some of it felt like it would have been better if this had been happening at a prestigious university. Like it would have been a lot more believable. Also the students in here, I feel like they speak more like they are adults. I know for sure actually that students do have wide ranges of vocabulary. However, I also feel like they still sound like teenagers, even with like a wide range of vocabulary, but they really did not. I do just wish that they had felt a little bit more like their true age, or I wish that this had been aged up just a little bit so that they were at a university. I also sort of think that this would have been a really fun book to take place, like maybe in the 1940s. It doesn't have to, but like I could, I feel like it fits just a little bit more because we had a lot of references to, I decided to do my entire paper just looking at books and not using the internet and only using a typewriter. And I was like, I love the aesthetic of that, but actually I don't know how practical that is. Maybe some of those elements like the typewriter and the fountain pens might've felt a little bit more organic. Now, having said that, I collect fountain pens. Uh, I also have two typewriters and I have a typewriter keyboard. So like, I'm not saying that that's not possible. And I did love those elements because those are elements that I personally connect to in real life. I'm just thinking maybe this would have been better if it was aged up a little bit. Also, one last thing about that is Ellis actually is like 17 in this book and she has already won the Pulitzer Prize for her novel. Again, I think that just would have made so much more sense if she was in college because it still would have been remarkable and like absolutely mind-blowing that somebody in college, like at a university, could have written something that was a Pulitzer Prize winning book. But it's really hard for me to think, okay, if she was 17, that means it was published when she was 16. That means she probably wrote it when she was 14 and then it revised it and stuff when she was 15. Mm, I don't know. Aside from that though, there were a lot of elements in this that I did like. I think that a lot of people are really, really going to enjoy it. Okay, so that was long. I thought I was gonna keep that short, uh, apparently not. <laughs> um, but I will keep this one short because I'm in the middle of it. I started last night, Strangers by Margaret Peterson Haddix. And you guys, I started it last night and I'm on page 165. 
So I was not expecting that. I was gonna read 20 pages, stayed up way too late, stayed up until three in the morning. And then I was like, oh my God, Lexi, get a freaking grip. You have to get up early. So I forced myself to put this away, but I cannot put this book down. I have been really, really lucky out recently with all of my books because I've been finding some really amazing books. It's the spooky season. I'm telling you like every autumn, we are just blessed with the strange and the spooky. And that is my jam. This book is just everything. It is so good. So it's about three siblings, Emma, Chess, and Finn, and all of them have a great life with their mom. Um, but then one day everything changes when they see a news report with three missing children. And the three missing children have their exact same name and middle name and birth date, and they are all siblings. And it's just, it's so good. It's so good. I am shocked at how much I'm obsessed with this book. This is one of the best cozy mysteries I've maybe ever read in my whole entire life, and I'm not even finished with it. One thing too that I really appreciate, the chapters are so short and every single chapter is a cliffhanger. That is the way to get me to read books. Short books with cliffhangers, I will fly through a book all night long. And then finally, I just want to start this book. I just want to start it. Also, I am so sorry for the lighting. The sun went by. Here's what we're going to do today. It's going to be a very autumnal day. First things first, I really want to go to Barnes and Noble. I really, really want to get House of Leaves if they have it. And I know a couple other spooky titles were dropped recently. So I want to see if they have some of those in stock. And then today, is going to be the start of Meg Ryan fall. <laughs> what I've been wanting for the past, I don't know, two months, three months, since since like July 1st, is to watch When Harry Met Sally and also You've Got Mail, quintessential Meg Ryan fall movies. And I want like a full out autumn autumnal themed movie night. So I think also after Barnes and Noble, we are going to hit up one of the stores and we're gonna get like a lot of candy. I'm also going to be hitting up Panera. And do you know why you guys? Because their autumn squash soup is back for the season. That's right. I have been craving their autumn squash soup. I don't know, like all year. Why don't they just make that like a, like a regular thing? It's just gonna be an autumny day, you know? We're gonna have spooky stories that we read. We're gonna go to the bookstore and buy spooky books. We're gonna watch Meg Ryan movies. We're gonna have lots and lots of candy. And we're gonna have our autumn squash soup. So it's a good day. Also so while I'm out, I think I'm going to get some stuff to make pumpkin bread because I think tomorrow morning I'm gonna bake. It just always puts me in like an autumn mood. So I think I'm gonna bake some pumpkin bread. I think that's all as far as updates and stuff. So let's, let's get started. Let's go to the bookstore. Let's hit up the spooky books. Let's get the autumn squash soup and let's get all the candy, our little hearts desire. Okay. now so I didn't get my soup but I did end up going to TF Chang's and I got their hot and sour soup and that was really good it was good soup good soup but now it is finally time for Meg wait hold on actually it's not I'm gonna show you what I got from Barnes and Noble <laughs> so let me show you what I got from Barnes and Noble and then I'll show you all the candy I got and then 
we will have our Meg Ryan fall movie night. Okay, so first of all, one thing that you should know about me is that I cannot resist a cute reusable bag. I just love reusable bags so much. First of all, they're better for the environment, but also second of all, they make everything so much easier. Like I can get everything in, like for my grocery runs in one time because they are so reliable, they never rip, they carry so much stuff. And if you have a bag with you, like either in your purse, like fold it up or a couple in your car and like a place runs out of bags, which happens a lot more than you would think actually. You're always set. So anyways, Barnes Noble has brand new reusable bags and I want to go back and buy more. This is what it looks like. It's really big. I like the color. So it's blue. They have this in black and gray at mine. For some reason, I was just really drawn to the blue. I don't know why. I would, I would have thought that I was going to go for the black one and I almost did. But I went for the blue one and I like no regrets. So I have this blue one. I got one, two, three, four, five books. So I'm very excited to show these to you today. So the very first book that I got was the Inheritance Games. And I got this because so many of you guys have been recommending this to me. I mentioned that I really loved Knives Out and so many of you were like, if you loved Knives Out, you have to pick up the Inheritance Games. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Whenever you suggest a book, I'm usually like, oh, let me write that down. Yeah, I will totally do that. Also, also, I changed from my cute little outfit to this like super baggy, comfortable sweatshirt. And let me tell you what it says. Hold on. Do you see this? It says Halloween Town. Like I just, I cannot. And it's huge. Like it's so big on me. And I love that. That's my favorite thing in the entire world. That's like one of my favorite parts of fall is just the comfortable like sweatshirts that you can swim in, you know? I don't know a lot about this. I just know that apparently you should buy it if you like Knives Out. And I like Knives Out. I don't know anything about this. So this is about a girl named Avery who becomes a billionaire overnight when a billionaire dies and leaves her virtually his entire fortune. But the only catch is that she must move into his mansion full of secret passages, riddles, and codes. That sounds so it also says that the house is occupied by the family that was just disinherited. Oh my God, this sounds exactly like Knives Out. Okay, cool. Good suggestion, everyone. Good job. The next thing I got was Sally Rooney's newest book because I love Sally Rooney. I gave normal people a five out of five stars. I just, I think that she is a genius. And even the last book that I didn't connect with as much, I still just thought her writing was remarkably brilliant. I'm a big Sally Rooney stan. So kind of like the inheritance games. I don't know what this is about. I have no idea. I don't care either. I'm sure I'm going to love it. So the new Sally Rooney book, everyone. Okay. Okay. The next one, I got this one because I've seen this on so many people's channels. Oh my gosh. There's a fountain pen on the cover. Okay. This is so random, but I just want you to know that in addition to being obsessed with books, I'm actually also like low key kind of obsessed with fountain pens. This is so niche. I know no one is going to care, but I love fountain pens. I collect fountain pens. I spend way too much money on inks for fountain pens. It's like a whole rabbit hole. Like if you don't care, which like it's fine, <laughs> then like don't worry about it. But like if you've never tried using a fountain pen or if you're like kind of into them, but like you haven't really researched them, just I'm telling you like start to look up like my favorite fountain pen or like fountain pen reviews or my favorite inks fountain pens you just it you get sucked into the fountain pen world so anyways i've seen this book all over booktube for years specifically um i know that riley marie really really likes this book but like a lot of people really really like this book and that is the strange case of the alchemist's daughter and this is by theodore goss and i'm very excited that they had this edition i think that this is going to be kind of like a perfect book to read for kind of like the spooky season because i'm pretty sure that this is following like all of the daughters of all of like the famous gothic characters so it says mary jekyll alone and penniless following her parents death quickly finds herself drawn into the secrets of her father's mysterious past a clue leads her to believe that Edward Hyde, her father's former friend and murderer, may be nearby, but there is still a reward for information resulting in his capture. A reward that would solve all of her immediate financial woes. But I know that like, like Sherlock Holmes is involved and I think Frankenstein is involved and I just feel like all of those gothic, like literary people, I don't know, like having their tales retold and in a different way. It just sounds really, really cool. So I'm excited. I really don't know a lot about it though. Next, I got a book that I don't know if how I'm going to feel about it. Uh, and that is House of Leaves. And this is by Mark 
Danielewski. This is kind of like a cult classic. You either love this book or you hate this book. I've heard that this is like one of the scariest books ever written. I can't read like gory stuff, so I'm really hoping that gore isn't in here. But this is just about a house that apparently like looks smaller from the outside and then inside it like keeps growing and weird things happen in the house. And then the last book I got is so random. I don't talk about this a lot on my channel. I used to, I guess like when I first started, but I happen to love picture books. I just, I love them so much. I think that they are darling. I have a huge respect for illustrators. I wish I could be so talented. Are you kidding me? Like if I could, I would be a children's illustrator. I can draw like a stick figure. That's like, that's my speed. And I saw this and I immediately was like, okay, I, I think I really want to pick out this book. <laughs> and that is The Little Ghost Who Was a Quilt. You guys. <laughs> It says here, it's hard to be a ghost when you're a quilt. I don't really know a lot about this so far, but um, I just read the first two pages and I was like, I'm gonna buy this. So the first, here, we'll pretend that I'm your uh, librarian or I'm your like bestie and I'm telling you a story before bed, okay? So it says, once there was a little ghost who was a quilt. And then look, look at how cute, oh my gosh. It's cute, can you see that? He didn't know why he was a quilt. His mom and dad and all of his friends were sheets. And I saw this and I read that little like passage or paragraph. And I was like, you know what? I'm just, I'm gonna buy it. Who doesn't wanna be besties with like a ghost who's a quilt? You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah. Okay, that's everything that I have. Let's do the ultimate Meg Ryan movie night. So it is the next day. I had like the best time last night. I love Meg Ryan Fall so much. Like it's just, it's honestly just like the world's best thing, you know? Decided to just live in this sweatshirt now, this Halloween Town sweatshirt. It is so comfortable and cozy and it's perfect because finally, finally, it is getting cooler. Like it was in the 60s last night. Right now it's like bright and early and it's in the 60s still. So I'm just like super, super happy. I ended up not reading any more of this last night. However, here is going to be the plan for today. First thing that we're gonna do is we are going to make some pumpkin bread. And I cannot tell you how excited I am to make this pumpkin bread. I have been craving homemade pumpkin bread for such a long time. So we're gonna make some pumpkin bread and then we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of reading. I'm on 165 and I'm just like dying to figure out what is happening in this story. It is just the perfect cozy mystery. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make some pumpkin bread. We're gonna read some of this cozy little mystery and it's gonna be a very, very autumnal day. So let's get to it. Hello! That would have been so much better if I had been in socks and it actually slided, but whatever. What can you do? Hello and welcome to the baking portion of this vlog. Uh, today we will be making homemade pumpkin bread. I say homemade with little bunny ears, uh, quotation marks, because uh, technically it's actually from a box. Wow! 
Martha Stewart on a budget, you know what I'm saying? Okay, nevertheless, it will be good because usually when I do some box baking, I really like to incorporate like a couple extra little elements and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna try to make this seem like it's homemade pumpkin bread. I mean, technically, I'm at my home, I'm making it, whatever, okay. So the first step is to take a fancy schmancy <laughs> pumpkin flour mixture and put it in a bowl. The next step, according to this lovely cardboard box, is to whisk the eggs, water, and oil in a large bowl. I'm subbing out some water, though, for like milk because I want it rich and creamy. Let's do that, I need a whisk. Sometimes in life you just need to take a whisk. So I've got my lovely little eggs and I'm just gonna be cracking these in here. Egg number one, egg number two, and egg number three. Okay, so we did the eggs, now let's do the water. Or the milk, got it right here. Lovely. And then the last thing that we're supposed to mix is the oil. Ta-da! Um, but then, then I'm adding a couple different ingredients. So I've got a couple of things that I want to incorporate. The first is, wait, where is it? It says it's 100% pumpkin for pumpkin pie. And I don't know, I just feel like maybe if I add a little bit of that to the bread, number one, it'll add moisture so it'll be like softer, but number two, it'll be even more pumpkin-y. Now I don't think I wanna add a lot to this. I'm just gonna like do like about that much. Yes, that looks very official. Okay, cool. The next thing that I'm adding is vanilla. Is this vanilla? It is, okay. It's vanilla. And the reason I'm adding vanilla is because I want to. I'm just gonna like eyeball it a little bit. It's probably good. And then the next thing we're adding is pumpkin pie spice. I know, very original. Adding lots of pumpkin-y things to this, but here we go. It's just a dash. I don't actually even know what's in here. Probably like cinnamon and stuff. It says cinnamon, cloves, ginger, allspice, and nutmeg. And now we can do the mixing. There is something so incredibly therapeutic about baking. Like I literally cannot even tell you. It makes me so unbelievably happy. This is definitely a very like wet mixture, probably because of the pumpkin pie that we just like added in. Oh my God, that's, it literally smells like fall already. Like, oh, it smells so good. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and butter the pan. But we don't want it to stick, you know? So, essential, crucial. I think that's good. So now we're just gonna go ahead and add this right away. And I'm very excited. I could not be more excited for this. I cannot even tell you. So we officially have our mix and I, I can already taste it. I can already taste the pumpkin-y goodness. I'm so excited. It says here that it's going to be baking um, for about 15 minutes. Wait, what? I have to bake it for 15 minutes and then I have to cover it loosely with foil and bake it for an additional 30 minutes. We're gonna try it and uh, hopefully it tastes okay. I'll keep you updated. Okay, let's put it in the oven. I'm laying down at the compiling. I see you in the wild Cause this time I will choose you Yeah I'll choose You know exactly how to look like this Holding in a bag full of goods and needs I need a night like this Knowing it's a risk cause you're using it You got all your secrets I can seem to move this thing
Hi guys, so it has been, I don't know, like a couple hours later. I'm officially on page 200 and on chapter 32 of The Strangers and it's just so good and so cozy. I think I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog now so that I can kind of like finish reading this and really like take my time and feel super, super cozy. It has been just like the best couple of weeks like getting ready for fall. I started this vlog, I think last week, so it's only been a week and a half, but I started it last week, I decorated for fall, and it's, I don't know, just put me in like the most fall mood. The weather is finally starting to get cooler. And with the pumpkin bread and the cozy books, I just feel so autumnal. I feel like a giant pumpkin, and I'm living my best life. So I'm gonna keep reading this cozy mystery and maybe have another slice of pumpkin bread in a little bit, and I think that is it. So I hope you guys are having a lovely, lovely day. If you made it to the end of the vlog, please drop me the pumpkin emoji, and yeah, I just hope that you are having the most cozy autumn wherever you are in the world. And also, uh, let me know down below what you do to get in the mood for autumn. I would love to know. And I think that's it for now, you guys. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Stay spooky! Oh.